Hi, I'm Julie Pages, a PhD student from the University of Zurich, and I will present a model of flavor addressing the anomalies and neutrino masses. It was developed in collaboration with Ravi Fuentes Martin, Gino Zidori, and Ben Stefanek in this paper. I want to start this talk by picking up on a very inspiring GGIT break seminar given about a week ago by Gian Giudice and Riccardo Latazzi on naturalness and the future of high energy physics. They gave a very clear picture of what's the hierarchy paradox. So if you consider this map, you have dimension two and dimension four operator that are just the renormalizable standard model. And then you can put higher dimensional operators in order to parameterize the new physics. In the renormalizable, re renormalizable part of the Lagrangian, we have accidental symmetries. And I find that the idea of accidental symmetries is best described by Ratazzi's cow. So a cow in itself is highly non-symmetric. It has a tail, a head, and if you move around, you don't see the same thing. Now, if the car is really far away from you, you only can distinguish a sphere. And if you choose to describe it as a sphere, SO3 becomes an accidental symmetry of your system. It's not a fundamental symmetry, but a consequence of the approximation. In the standard model, we have uh, several accidental symmetries. You want lepton number for each family, you want baryon number, flavor, and CP that are approximate. And simplicity means two things in this context. It's the fact that the model is simple because it has multiple accidental symmetries, and the fact that it stays so until a very high scale, which can be deduced by assuming order one Wilson coefficient in the effective theory. And that is the scale of the new physics we expect from simplicity. So 10 to the 15 for proton decay, 10 to the 14 for neutrino masses, and at least from what we see 10 to the six for lepton flavor violation. On the other side, the Higgs mass is quadratically sensitive to the scale of new physics and a high scale would destabilize its mass. That's the big hierarchy problem. So the scale for naturalness must therefore be as close as possible to the Higgs mass. And this is the hierarchy paradox. It opposes naturalness and simplicity. Now I want to go even further and ask this question. Is the standard model really simple? The gauge sector certainly is. There are only three parameters, G1, G2, G3, that can describe all interaction among gauge bosons and matter. And since all families have the same quantum numbers, we have lepton and also quark flavor universality in this sector, which we can describe by a U3 to the fifth flavor symmetry. But the flavor sector is not so simple. It requires 13 parameters and nine if we had neutrino to describe the masses and mixing present in the standard model. However, it seems to have a structure. The CKM is more or less the identity and the mass spectrum is very hierarchical with a flavor symmetry that now looks more like a U2 to the fifth. Let me say more about this U2 to the fifth flavor symmetry. So, this U2 flavor symmetry would distinguish the third family from the first and second family. In the case of exact U2, only the third family quarks and leptons gets a mass. And we can parameterize deviation from this um, approximate symmetry by small spurion, epsilon L and epsilon H of the order 10 to the minus one, 10 to the minus two. Why is this um, symmetry a useful tool for new physics searches? Because this way, the new physics will only affect the third family, leaving the light families protected. At this point, I think it makes sense to define U2 to the fifth and not U3 to the fifth as the approximate accidental symmetry of our standard model. And this way, we redefine the concept of simplicity in the beginning. By doing this, we split the two scales. We split the scale for first family and uh, for first and second family and for the third family. And this might even help for the hierarchy paradox because 
separating the two scales, we can bring the third family scale much closer to the TEV scale. And the, the simplicity is kept until the one, two scale. So it's not guaranteed that this is going to help, but we can hope that at lambda three, we will have um, some indication on how to solve the big hierarchy problem. And even if we don't, it still allows us to explore new physics allowed at a few TV scale, so just around the corner. And at this point, I just want to advertise this work uh, by my colleagues where they classified the SMAFT operators according to the U25 flavor symmetry that helps reduce a lot the number of relevant operators you need to consider. Now, is there reasons to believe that there is new physics just around the corner at the, at the TV scale? Actually, there is, because we, we've seen some uh, lepton flavor universality violation in BDKs in two types of um, decay, first in neutral current, B to SLL. And for this, the cleanest and the strongest leading observable is RK that was just updated um, in, the, in the winter conferences this year. So it's the ratio of B to K mu mu over B to K EE. And the new um, deviation, the new update sets the deviation of this observable from the standard model prediction at 3.1 sigma. Now the B2SLL system has a lot of observables. There's RK, RK star, P5 prime, B2K mu mu, B2K star mu mu, BS2 mu mu, and BS2 phi mu mu. And all of them deviate a bit from the standard model prediction. Overall, we can um, estimate the, the pool from the standard model of new physics and the, the global significance considering um, a really agnostic fit is 3.9 sigma, as was shown in this paper. Now, if we choose specific direction of new physics or specific operators in BFT, the significance even increase being above 4.6 sigma, sometimes above 5 sigma. We also saw lepton, or we also have hints of lepton flavor universality violation in charge current BDKs, so B2C tau mu. And these in DFT also connected to the neutral current by a to left invariance. In this case, the observable is B2D tau mu over B2D L nu, where L is, a, is one of the light families. And you see here as well on this plot that uh, the, the world average in red is in tension with the standard model, or D and or D star. And this system, so considering both has um, um, deviation from the standard model at 3.1 sigma. In this uh, charge current, there is also orge psi that has a small deviation at the moment. So this is the, um, the table of all uh, observable related to these two systems, plus uh, the muon G minus two, of course, that we heard a lot about recently, that I'm not gonna talk um, um, about in this talk, but which is obviously a really interesting anomaly as well. And if you take, um, if you look at these um, deviations and you classify them with respect to the family, you see that the first observation is that the new physics effect in neutral current and charge current anomalies is of the same order or similar order. It's maybe, yeah, it, it, it's of the similar order, but it corrects different diagram in the standard model. So it corrects a three level diagram for um, the charge current anomaly and a loop diagram for the neutral current anomaly. And the, the, the charge current is tied to the tau as the neutral current is charged to the, to the muon. So we can expect um, the new physics, if we have a new physics explanation at the TV scale, we can expect that the coupling to the third family is much stronger than the coupling to the light families. And this really smells like U2 to the fifth, as was um, realized in this paper. So now I'm gonna say just a quick word on the, um, the best mediator for this model. The best, sorry, the best single mediator because there are solutions with multiple mediators as well. But the best single mediator um, was found to be the U1 vector leptoquark. With certain properties, 
So first, it's a light mediator at the TV scale. Um, it's a good mediator because it doesn't uh, mediate any three level delta F equal to. Also, it has a compelling UV origin from Patisalam, which is a very nice um, grand unification group with no proton decay and quark lepton unification. And it has to be flavored, so to couple um, with a U2-like structure. And in the case of exact U2, again, it will only couple to third family of quark and leptons. And um, if U2 is broken by some small spurion, it will also couple to the lighter families generating not only the charge current, but also the neutral current. So you see here why the charge current um, contribution will be stronger than in the neutral current. OK, so at this point, I will um, describe the model we built to address P anomalies and neutrino ma masses. Um, I will describe it mostly in the, in the 4D picture, but it can also be seen as a 5D model, and I mentioned the correspondence as I go. So the model is a, is a flavor non-universal model, and it is like this because it's made of three sites with the same gauge, gauge group repeated three times. And this can be seen as a deconstruction um, of a 5D model with three special points in the fifth dimension. We took Patisalam unification because of what I mentioned before, and it contains our U1 leptoquark. And uh, we take the fermion families to be mostly localized on each site. So each in the, in the 4D, each family is only charged on the one of the gauge group. And uh, in the 5D picture, uh, the, the zero mode profile of the fermion are mostly peak at one of the sites and has a, an, an exponential tail overlapping with the other side uh, with a suppression factor, this epsilon L. Now, um, to understand how this changed the standard model, we have to go through a series of spontaneous symmetry breaking. First, we need to do vertical breaking from Patisalam to the standard model via uh, a new scalar sigma, the web of a new scalar sigma, and from standard model to SU3 cross U1 via uh, the, the standard Higgs, which is in this case uh, a bidoublet. And then we have to do horizontal breaking in order to bring the different sites together by breaking um, the, the different groups to the diagonal subgroup. And this is done by nonlinear link fields. So if we can control all the webs, so by moving these, these lines around, the, the lines uh, large web means short line and long line mean, means small web. So by, by moving these lines around, so moving the web, we can reproduce the Yukawa matrices and we can also address the B anomalies. And to do so, we need um, a sigma that is mostly localized on the first site with an exponential decay, uh, an exponential, exponentially suppressed interaction to the other site. And we need a Higgs that is mostly localized on the third site with an exponentially suppressed interaction with the other site. And this um, exponential suppression, this, uh, well, this epsilon h, this nearest neighbor interaction suppression gives um, stability to the standard model Higgs sector as was shown in this uh, paper. Now, the, um, this PS cube model can uh, have a very nice low energy description because um, we, we have to fix the, the web of sigma 1, sigma 2, and omega 1, 2 to be above 1,000 TV for flavor changing neutral constraint. And if we do this, then below this scale, the description looks um, like this with standard model 1, 2 times Patisalam 3. And this has uh, the accidental U25 flavor symmetry that we saw is a really 
strong um, um, structure of the Yukawa and the anomalies. And um, epsilon H and epsilon L now can, can actually be seen as spurion of this U25 flavor symmetry. And since um, we have this suppression between the third site and the light site, that prevents too strong interaction between them. The, um, the breaking of the last patisalam, patisalam 3, can be uh, as low as a few TeV. So with this model, we can describe the flavor structure of the standard model, masses and mixing. And we can also explain the B anomalies with the U1 laptop quark coming from the breaking of PS3. So it will couple mainly to the third family of quark lepton and couple to the light families with a suppressed interaction proportional to epsilon L. So this model with um, nearest neighbor interaction provides a dynamical description of the flavor sector of the standard model that is consistent with the B anomalies, uh, providing we choose these um, nearest neighbor interaction or U25 spurion as epsilon H is epsilon L squared 10 to the minus two and a really small epsilon uh, R. Now the neutrino. So at first, it seems we have a problem in the neutrino sector because quark lepton unification means that the mass of the um, charged lepton and the mass of the down type quark are equal which is fine, but also means that the mass of the neutrino and the mass of the uptype quark is equal. And this is clearly wrong. Um, also, since we have a low scale unification, so sigma three at TV, this implies that the Majorana mass of the uh, right-handed neutrino cannot go higher that, than the TV. So we don't have enough suppression to suppress the, the quadratic top mass in the, in the type 1 CISO um, formula, for example. Notice that actually this type 1 CISO would work for the first family because in the numerator, we have the Higgs suppression quadratically. And in the denominator, the web of sigma 1 is also much higher. So we need a new source to suppress um, this Dirac mass that is 12 orders of magnitude above uh, what we expect for the neutrino masses. So it's 100 GeV versus 0.1, at, at most 0.1 electron volt. And the minimal extension um, is to add fermion singlet as left with uh, hierarchical Majorana masses to implement inverse CISO. So this was done already in this work by Grillo and Stefanek, but um, the, the new thing here is the hierarchical structure of the Majorana masses that I will explain now. So the inverse CISO setup is, ma is made of three parts. A Dirac mass between new left and new right, a Dirac mass between S left and new right, and the Majorana mass for S left. If we diagonalize these nine by nine mass matrix, we obtain the light neutrino mass matrix as the formula in blue. Now, since we have U25 in the, in the Yukawa sector. It means the, um, the ratio MD of MR will be very hierarchical and it also appears quadratically in the formula. So we need a very hierarchical Majorana mass in order to compensate for this and yield an anarchical neutrino mass matrix. This is done dynamically by spontaneous symmetry breaking of U1 fermion number via uh, a new singlet scalar phi i. So we can uh, realize this anarchical pattern, both in the eigenvalue and in the mixing angle by um, assuming these two relation between the epsilon. So the first one is for eigenvalues and the second one is for the mixing. So what is the, the prediction of this model? Since we have mixing between the active neutrino and the pseudo Dirac heavy neutral leptons, we obviously have PMNS unitarity violation. We have an expected pattern like this. And where you see that the, the dominant entry is the free free entry, while the other entries are, are flavor suppressed. 
And this is, um, this is actually close to the, um, to the experimental bound. So, so this would be the, the first sign, um, the first prediction of our model in the neutrino sector. Now, just to finish this talk, let me mention the duality between um, this construction and um, the, the deconstructed model and the full 5D model, where we can uh, identify the epsilon, the nearest neighbor suppression factors, with the exponential decay of, um, of the 5D profiles of our fields. And you see that the, the strength of this uh, exponential decay is controlled by the bulk mass of our fields, of our 5D fields. And this, um, this means that all our uh, relation we found on the epsilon can be translated into relation on the 5D bulk mass. And the nice thing of this uh, 5D construction is that now same order 5D bulk mass can explain the large hierarchies uh, of the VEV in the deconstructed model. Now to conclude, um, the three sites of 5D flavor non-universal Patisalam model yields quark lepton unification with quantization of U1 charge. It gives a natural description of the standard model Yukawa and explain the B anomalies. And the neutrino extension is uh, minimal, so it only adds free Fermion singlet and uh, scalar singlet, breaking U1 Fermion number. It yields an anarchic light neutrino mass matrix, despite the U25 that was in the Yukawa sector. It predicts PMNS unitarity violation, um, mostly in the free free entry. And it finds a, a really natural setup in the context of extra dimension. Thank you for watching.